welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today let us discuss about myasthenia gravis. It is a problem in the neuromuscular junction. Uh, it is characterized by progressive fatigability, weakness, uh, especially skeletal muscles or uh, ophthalmic muscles. It is due to antibodies against acetylcholine receptors in our body. So, the acetylcholine receptors can be completely blocked and nerve conduction will not be done. It is mainly due to antibodies against acetylcholine receptors. Drugs like penicillamine can produce antibody mediated myasthenia crisis. Aminoglycosides or ciprofloxin can induce or increase the myasthenia. Women are affected more than men. It is mainly associated with some disorders like thymoma, SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, SAADH, pernicious anemia, acquired red cell aplasia, pembigoid, dermatomyositis, autoimmune thyroiditis, scleroderma, Takayasu disease, Addison's and Graves disease, hypogamma globulinemia and autoimmune encephalitis. These are the associated problem and thymoma is one of the most important disease that's why we take always one chest x-ray whenever we are come, come across myasthenia gravis. There are some antibodies which can be detected in myasthenia one that one important antibody is acetylcholine receptor antibody another one is anti-musk antibodies. This is a problem in myasthenia gravis. You can see the slide here. There is antibodies against uh, acetylcholine receptors. So, the receptors are completely blocked. So, the nerve conduction will not occur in the myoneural junction. Now, the symptoms are very classical. Patient develops progressive weakness. So, when they try to talk, initially the voice will be very good. Then slowly the voice comes down that is very classical of myasthenia gravis and weakness classically starts in the uh, early morning they, they have minimal weakness and by evening they have severe weakness it's a progressive uh, weakness diurnal variation is there and if they take rest again it improves then again it increases the classical clinical finding will be bilateral ptosis the progressive ptosis you can see morning there will not be any ptosis by afternoon evening they have severe tosis. They also have diplopia because of the ophthalmoplegia. So, more than 50 percent of the patients have ocular symptoms and tosis or diplopia. They have difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in talking all are due to bulbar involvement. So, bulbar involvement is very very classical of myasthenia graves. You can also see that patient will be unable to lift their hand above the shoulders or try they cannot maintain the posture for a long time. They will not be able to sustain the up gaze because of uh, progressive ptosis. If you ask the patient to look upwards for few minutes, slowly you can see that patient is developing ptosis. And one important uh, problem in uh, these patients like, like you can when you are examining you can see the patient is having ptosis with ophthalmoplegia. It can mimic uh, third nerve palsy, but pupil, if you examine, pupils are spared. But whereas in third nerve palsy, pupils are involved, and you can see most of the time dilated pupil. You can see there are differential diagnoses for uh, this type of ophthalmoplegia patient, like who is having snake bite, like cobra bite, or uh, uh, crate bite, botulism, uh, Miller Fisher variant of uh, GBS. So all these things you can get. Uh, cranial nerve palsies and ophthalmoplegias, uh, but one important differential diagnosis is always snake bite. So, snake bite also you can get bilateral ptosis, bilateral ophthalmoplegia. Uh, all these conditions, uh, they are differential diagnosis we have already explained. Another important test which can be done in emergency room is uh, ice pack test. If any patient who is having bilateral ptosis and if you are keeping ice packs for 5 minutes uh, uh, on the eyes, you can see the ptosis is improving. This transient, transient improvement in ptosis is due to the cold, cold that is ice pack decreasing the acetylcholine stress breakdown of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. So, partially the problem will be corrected and temporarily patient will be improved. So, that can be done in emergency room. 
So some time ptosis can be uh, unilateral. Initial phase of the disease uh, ptosis can be unilateral, but after some time you can see that ptosis is becoming bilateral and symmetrical and patient can have ophthalmoplegia also. Now one important test which can pick up myasthenia in emergency room is tensilon test. Patient who is having progressive uh, uh, dysphonia, progressive muscle weakness, progressive ptosis and ophthalmoplegia, you can give uh, one drug that is adrophonium bromide. It is a short acting anticholinesterase, you can give 2 milligram initially. If there is no adverse effects like severe bradycardia or abdominal pain, you can give 8 milligram in 30 seconds. You can see the transient improvement of uh, a patient after giving this adrophonium. If there is any adverse effects, you can give atropine. So, atropine should be ready uh, because the most important adverse effects of this adrophonium is severe bradycardia. So, that can be countered by uh, atropine. There is a classification for myasthenia that is Osserman's classification. Class 1 ocular myasthenia, ophthalmoplegia can be there. Class 2 ocular myasthenia with skeletal muscle weakness. Class 3 rapid progression of weakness with myasthenic crisis. Class 4 is late severe. Take 2 years to progress from class 1 to class 2 then lead to crisis. Antibodies can be picked up in myasthenia gravis. 80 percent of the patient can have anti acetylcholine receptor antibodies and another 38 to 50 percent can have anti musk antibodies. Some patients like 6 to 12 percent will not have antibodies. They are called as seronegative myasthenia or antibody negative myasthenia and other antibodies like anti striated muscle antibodies also can be seen in some patients. Electromyography or single fiber electromyography is the most important test. We can do repetitive stimulation of the muscles. It shows characteristic decremental response. That is a classical finding in myasthenia gravis. Initially, the response will be there during the simulation. Then slowly it decreases. This is called as decremental response during electron electromyography test. You can see here chest X-ray shows mediastinal widening. CT also shows mediastinal tumors. In some patients who is having mediastinal tumors, you can see. Uh, that side phrenic nerve is compressed and that side uh, diaphragm will be elevated. But usually in myasthenia as such bilateral phrenic nerve uh, palsy can occur and difficulty in breathing can be there. If there is unilateral weakness always think that it is a compressive neuropathy of uh, phrenic nerve in the mediastinum. So there are some drugs which can be uh, which can be used for myasthenia gravis anticholinesterase inhibitors that is pyridostigmine and neostigmine. Pyridostigmine 30 to 120 milligram every 6 hourly, neostigmine 7.5 to 30 milligram 6 hourly can be given. They have some side effects like uh, uh, dryness, they have some side effects that can be uh, controlled with uh, uh, side effects like diarrhea, abdominal pain. Uh, can be controlled with glycoperlate or propanthalin or havasanamide tablets. Some patients uh, with antibody production may require steroids also. Steroids are also used in patient who is having antibody mediated myasthenia. And one uh, cholinesterase crisis is uh, uh, excessive anti medication, patient can have pallor, sweating, nausea, vomiting, salivation, colic, abdominal pain. In that condition, when the patient coming with crisis, we, we may not be knowing whether it is a uh, myasthenic crisis or cholinergic crisis because of the patient's agitation. If we give adrophonium, if the weakness improves with uh, adrophonium, it is myasthenic crisis. If the weakness deteriorates with the adrophonium, then it is cholinergic crisis. In suspected cholinergic crisis, we can treat the patient with atropine or glycoperlite. We have seen the previous slides. So, you can see the mnemonic for mascarinic and uh, signs and symptoms because of cholinergic crisis, salivation, lacrimation, urinary incontinence, diarrhea, GI upset, emesis, meiosis also can be there. So, when we treat myasthenic uh, myasthenia, we have uh, different drugs. We have already seen that uh, neostigmine, physiostigmine, 
for the treatment but there are some other treatment options like uh, thymus if thymus is enlarged then that is a reason for myasthenia we have to you go for thymectomy plasma exchange or plasma paresis can be done in myasthenic crisis ivig 2 g per kg can be given in acute problem steroids are used in myasthenia with uh, uh, various antibodies so steroid can suppress antibody production pregnancy also you can try prednisolone if steroids are contraindicated or if steroids are required for long term therapy then we can go for immunosuppressive drugs like azathioprine mycophenolate mofetil cyclophosphamide tacrolimus like that like any other autoimmune disease here also we can use steroids or steroid sparing agents in acute phase uh, we can give we can go for plasma exchange or iv immunoglobulin thymus surgery should be done in patients who is having uh, large thymus gland with myasthenia gravis so commonly used uh, therapy is like this pyridoxine prednisolone azathioprine mycophenolate mofetil cyclosporine plasma exchange and ivig in acute problem thymectomy should be done in patient who is having thymus enlargement some drugs should be avoided in myasthenia gravis especially in emergency room you should avoid aminoglycosides quinolones macrolides beta blockers quinine derivatives magnesium sulfate penicillamine that can induce antibody mediated the uh, problem in myasthenia muscle relaxant like pancuronium vecuronium local anesthetics silocaine in large amounts so that these drugs should be avoided in myasthenia gravis so anesthesia part of myasthenia is very very important we should avoid or reduce the dose of neuromuscular blocking agents that is very very important other types of uh, anesthesia or lower dose of anesthetic drug should be preferred in myasthenia gravis lambert eaton syndrome is another problem which mimics myasthenia but here it's a calcium channel problem antibodies act against the voltage gated calcium channels it it all the clinical findings are just opposite to the myasthenia gravis because they also have a muscle weakness the muscle weakness initially itself patient can have myasthenia on repeated movements you can see that the problem is coming down so that is lambert eaton syndrome myasthenia gravis is one of the important neurological problem which can come to emergency room with acute presentations it can be myasthenic crisis or it can be due to cholinergic crisis adrophonium test is adrophonium or tensilon test is very important test which can diagnose myasthenic crisis from cholinergic crisis if the patient improves then it is myasthenia patient deteriorates then it is cholinergic crisis if you try atropin if the patient improves then again it is cholinergic crisis thank you